Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, I am Wendy Wasserman. I'm the Director of Communications here at the Appalachian Regional Commission, and today's webinar is one in a series we're doing about the Partnerships for our Opportunity and Workforce and Economic Revitalization Initiative, which is also known as the Power Initiative. You've probably heard that before. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with ARC, the Appalachian Regional Commission, our mission is to innovate and partner and invest to build community capacity and strengthen economic growth in Appalachia. And obviously, uh, part of that has to do with making sure that our coal-impacted communities are having the tools that they need to uh, create a more vibrant economic future. So I mentioned this is one of our uh, series of webinars we're doing here at ARC. Previous webinars are on our website at www.arc.gov slash power, as long as a whole bunch of other resources you can find about the Power Initiative. Um, we'll be talking about that uh, website a lot, quite a bit today, and you'll see it uh, flashed up on your screen. You won't be able to forget it by the end. <laughs> um, uh, if you have any questions during today's webinar, you can see the Q&A box on the top of your toolbar. You can uh, pull those down, type them in, and we'll be getting to questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so you can pop those in any time uh, during, during our talk today. Um, we do have audio only available uh, to call in. The number is here, 866-876-6756 with the passcode 884-7771. There's a typo there, so I apologize for that. Um, but hopefully uh, for those who are able to join us, it's all working well for you. So today we're going to be talking with Jeff Schwartz, uh, the ARC's program manager uh, on the Power Initiative, about how communities can prepare for an application um, about power. Before we get to that, I just want to uh, quickly um, get you review some basics about what is the Power Initiative. If you are new to this conversation or you need a refresher or if you've heard it before, you get to um, – just uh, hear it again for a minute. Um, the Power Initiative is part of the Obama administration's Power Plan, um, which is a comprehensive way to look at uh, the economic impact of the changes in the way that the world is producing and consuming electricity. There are 10 federal agencies participating in the Power Initiative, and um, we're here, Appalachian Regional Commission is one of the lead agencies, as well as our colleagues at the Economic Development Administration. We're going to be referencing some of their materials today, too. Um, so ARC's role in the Power Initiative is to help fund power projects that will lead to economic diversity, job training, and reemployment opportunities job creation in existing or new industries, and new sources of investments in these communities in Appalachia. Here at the Appalachian Regional Commission, our uh, primary interest is in the 13 Appalachian states, um, stretching from Mississippi to New York, 420 counties in those states. Um, and you can see a map of those states and those uh, interests on the website. The URL is down at the bottom, arc.gov slash power. So as part of the Power Initiative last month, the Obama administration, uh, so Appalachian Regional Commission and the Economic Development Administration on behalf of the Obama administration announced that there was $65.8 million available uh, to coal-impacted communities to help them um, diversify their economic uh, futures and develop projects that will give them more economic vibrancy going forward. Through that announcement, um, we did it in two phases, or sort of two chunks, if you will. The first is our implementation of projects, which we're actually going to be talking about and focusing on today, um, through uh, the Power Initiative uh, um, announcement. Um, ARC is making available up to $45 million for coal-impacted communities in Appalachia to take advantage of this initiative. And the Economic Development Administration, again, our, our partner, our federal partner in this effort, is making up to $19.6 million uh, to coal communities in Appalachia and actually also the rest of the country. 
In addition to that, uh, we're making up to $1.2 million for technical assistance support for communities to prepare these kinds of applications and get themselves ready. We're going to actually going to table that for now and talk about that on our next webinar in two weeks' time. Um, so we'll uh, give you the date and stuff for that later. Um, but today's discussion is really going to focus on the implementation uh, program and the implementation support that's available for projects with Jeff Schwartz, as I mentioned, our ARC Power Program Manager. And he's going to talk about the steps that communities can take to prepare to make that uh, application um, and a sort of two-phase application process that we're working with. So again, if you have any questions, you can see the Q&A at the top of your toolbar. Just pull it on down, type in a question, and we'll get to it at the end. All right, Jeff. Thank you, Wendy. Good afternoon, everybody. As the Power Initiative Manager here at ARC, I'm getting a lot of calls and emails that start with, I want to get power money. Can I use it to do this? Now, this could be an infrastructure project, could be a workforce training program, or any other activity, but that is starting at the wrong end of the process. It's starting at the end. We need to go back to the beginning. Before you read the FFL, before you think about power, take a look at your local or regional economic development strategy. This could be a formal comprehensive economic development strategy that's done by the economic development districts in your area or it could be a state or county plan or the ARC strategic plan for your region, the state ARC plan for your region. Start with that plan and look at what is needed for your area. Determine the needs that you want to address, that you can address, and ones that are going to be making a difference where you are. Identify a solution, something that is going to meet those needs. Once you have a solution, and you know what kind of project you want to implement, if it's workforce training or broadband deployment, that will help you define the geography of where you're going to be working and who you need to be working with. Some projects will have a larger area. If you're dealing with a workforce development program, you want to look at the entire labor shed for your area. Where do the workers live? Where are they commuting to? That will give you an idea of who in that geography you need to be working with whether it's the community colleges or the other venues that will help with the training, the employers that will help you determine the training needs, and the different service agencies that can help facilitate the process. If you're looking at broadband in that geography, who are the telephone companies and the telecom companies that you need to be working with, the different county governments and the state governments that need to be a part of this. Figure out who your collaborators are. Then take a look at whether it's a fit for ARC. There are a lot of really good projects out there, and a lot of projects are going to make a big difference in the region. Not all of them will be a fit for ARC, but many of them will. And when you look at a fit for ARC, keep in the back of your mind that ARC requires a match. And take a look back at those collaborators that you just identified, because they can help you with those matching costs and contrib contributions to the project. So take a look and see if it's going to be a fit for ARC. If you determine that it's a fit for ARC, then you need to determine if it's a fit for power. And we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about those in the next couple of slides. I mentioned before that you want to look at your local economic development plan, and that is really where you need to start. Consult with your economic development districts, your planning and development regional districts, because they often have, or they all have, comprehensive economic development strategies, SEDs. They can be very, very useful in identifying the needs and determining what the economic strategies for that region are. Talk to your ARC state program manager and ask him or her for guidance. They have an ARC regional plan, and they're also aware of the different county and municipal plans that are out there. After you've looked at that plan and you've got your strategy and your geography in place, Take a look at ARC's strategic investment plan. It's brand new, just developed this past year, and it's a guide that we're using to determine where we're going to be investing our funds. And this will help you determine if it's a good investment for ARC, if it's a good fit with the ARC program. And remember, your imagination of what is good for your locale has to fit with these plans. Then let's look and see if you're going to be a fit for a power initiative. And the first thing is to look and see whether you're coal impacted. This is more than just having coal mines that may have closed or power plants that have laid off workers. 
we're looking at the full supply chain, and there's a lot of data out there. We did a workshop, or I'm sorry, a webinar on that two weeks ago, and it's recorded on our website. You can get a lot more detail on there. The important thing to know is you need to make the case as to how you're coal impacted. And if you determine you are, then you could be a good fit for a power initiative program. So let's take a look at the power program. The power initiative has four main objectives within it. And these come straight from the administration and apply to all the federal agencies working on the power program. We're looking at economic diversification, job creation, getting more capital into the region and to the world, and workforce development reemployment opportunities for those who have lost their jobs. We need to, we want to keep these people home and we need to make sure that they have the opportunity to do that. We're looking at building a competitive workforce, enhancing access to and use of broadband services and fostering entrepreneurial activities. These are ARC's funding priorities. We've taken these and we've focused the initiative onto these four areas. Industry clusters refers to both existing industry clusters and new clusters moving in. ARC has three primary outcomes that we're looking at. Now, these are not exclusive. They're not the only outcomes we're going to consider, but they are the primary ones that we think are going to be moving the economic needle in the region. We want to look at jobs created and retained, jobs obtained, businesses created. There's a fine difference between these, but jobs created refers to businesses expanding or new businesses opening up and creating employment opportunities that did not exist in the region before. Jobs retained refers to businesses that feel they need to close down and cut back on their workforce, but because of this intervention or the project you put in place, they're able to keep these workers employed and continue on. Jobs obtained is often, most often used with workforce programs. Either people are trained for jobs and then they are able to obtain existing to fill existing openings, or sometimes they're matchmaking services that pair those who are out of work with employers who need to hire more. And businesses created could be new businesses coming in, as well as existing businesses expanding. ARC is looking at four funding preferences. And these include the administration's preferences as well. They're part of this. The ARC is going to review the pre-applications and look for indications of these elements. All of them are important, but we are using outcomes as an indicator of the return on investment that we hope to get from this project. So I would advise all of you to be able to demonstrate that return. And in this case, you might say the ends justifies the means. But the outcome justifies the amount of the grant. Later in the presentation, we're going to go over the application questions and show you where you can address these items in the grant application. Now, you can see that ARC and EDA are partnering together, but I need to remind you that as these applications come in, and you can use a single application for both ARC or EDA or joint ARC and EDA projects, but we're going to be reviewing them separately, and each of us has our own prior, our own process and procedures for reviewing them. ARC is encouraging applications to come in between $500,000 and $1.5 million, but those are not hard and fast limits. If it's a little bit less, a little bit more, that's fine. We want to make sure that we have the resources there and that you have the resources to fully implement the project that you're going to be doing. This is a little different in that we're using a rolling application process. We don't have a hard and fast deadline. That means you don't have to worry about missing the deadline, but at some point you do have to declare that the project is done and submit it. We're going to try to get the first few reviews done during this current fiscal year before September 30th. And it's in a two-phase process. After we've reviewed your project and we decided that it is a good fit for ARC and a good fit for power, one or either both agencies will invite full applications. So we're taking the pre-application or proposal first, and then once that has 
then pass the review process, we will invite a full application. For ARC, any project in the ARC region will be eligible, as long as they can demonstrate that it is a coal-impacted community. Now, when you go to our website, and we're going to see that on the ARC.gov Power website, we've got a green link down there in the middle of the page that will take you directly to our Power Portal. This is where you submit your application. You fill it all out online. And on the application, there are several different steps that you go through. You're going to have to register for the portal, but that's easy. You just need to be able to spell your name, your email, and then create a password for yourself. We'll ask for some identifying information. Um, there is a form to be filled out, ED900P. We have all the questions up there. And we're going to go over some of the questions on that form so that you can see where the information fits in. Um, the SF 424 forms with the, uh, the, the cover sheet for grants and the A and the C budget sheets, if you've done federal grants before, you have experience with these forms. They're very straightforward. We have the questions online. You fill the numbers out online, and everything will be taken care of and done automatically. There will be certain uploads that you'll need. We do ask for maps if you're doing construction projects or for the ARC region. We'll ask for a budget narrative. And at the end of the application package, you'll see there is a page where you upload all these documents. At the very end, you click Submit, and that's the end of the process. We'll get to that in a minute. The ED900 form has two sections. Part one is for all applicants. Part two is for construction projects only. And those who are working on construction projects will generally have an architect or an engineer with them, and these questions are very straightforward. They ask for the environmental information. They'll ask for the location, who's going to own the property. And they're rather straightforward questions. So I want to focus on part one, which is for all applicants. There are nine questions here. We're going to go over some of them, and I want to indicate to you where the different bits of information can fit in. If you see under the question, I added some words in italics. These refer back to those funding preferences that I discussed a few moments ago. For example, under question one, where it talks about the description of applicants, not only do you need to tell us who the partners are and what their roles are, we'd like a little bit of a description that demonstrates the collaborative nature of the partnership. The P in power stands for partnership, and we want people who are all working together. Not everybody's going to put forth the same effort, but we need to have an idea of who's going to be doing what and how the project is going to work. Question three, the project description, is going to be your narrative section. In that narrative, you want to demonstrate how it's outcome driven. You're going to talk about the strategy that was used in the assessment and planning that led up to this approach and how you, how and why you think this project is going to lead to economic restructuring in your region. We also would like you to talk about the leveraged resources that are going to play a part in this project, not just the dollar values that are going to be in the budget, but the other resources that will come into place because of this program that you're putting in, that you're undertaking. Question four, where it talks about the need for the project, is where you need to cite the economic development strategy being addressed. You don't need to upload the whole strategy there, but you do need to cite it and maybe quote the specific phrasing or that specific strategy so we know that this project fits with that strategy. And the citation will help us find it if we need it. We also have this place here where you can describe the coal impact on your service area and cite the relevant data so you can make your case for being coal impacted. Question seven. The funding and cost share matrix is where you need to include all funds. And remember, we require a matching share, so you need to include not just the ARC and EDA funds that are being requested, but all the matching funds that are in the budget, and be sure to indicate whether it's cash or in kind and the status. And match is a topic, by the way, that we're going to be getting into later in about, I think on May 18th, we're going to have another webinar focused specifically on match um, what we can count as match, what you can use, and some ideas for sources of where to find some of that match. 
after you've finished the, the application, you've got all the information there, everything's been uploaded, you get to that last page, it says submit. Once you click the button, it'll come up with a little question that says, are you sure you're ready to submit? And then you click it again, and the project is here and ready for us to review. But remember that this is just your pre-application. After it has been reviewed and then green-lighted, you'll notice that when you come back to this website, the status will change to full application invited. It could say, well, the other statuses are submitted under review, and then hopefully full application invited. Following that, we'll go on to step three, which will be submitting a full application, and I think that's a topic for a later webinar. Great. Thank you, Jeff. This is super helpful, and I know uh, just having this sort of step-by-step -step directional will help communities be able to figure out how to navigate the portal and how to conceptualize projects that will indeed have an economic impact on um, their, their communities and the community's future. Um, as Jeff mentioned, uh, uh, as Jeff mentioned, maybe um, this is part of a series of webinars that are happening here. Um, we have several. Uh, you can see them here. Uh, We've done some on a basic overview of what is the Power Initiative, and we did a webinar specifically, as Jeff mentioned, that was uh, on research and data um, and how to evaluate if a community is coal impacted. Um, those two webinars plus this one are already available on, well, this one will be recorded and made available on our website, which is right there, www.arc.gov slash power. Um, all the forms, all the resources, all the background material that Jeff was talking about is also available um, on that page. We had some screenshots for it before, but it's really designed to be a one-stop shop for everything that you need. In addition to these webinar series, we're also bringing our power team on the road. Uh, we're doing a series of five regional workshops. We just finished one in Wise, Virginia last week. Um, and we're going to be in Kentucky, Manchester, Kentucky, later this week, um, in Hidden Valley, Pennsylvania next week, um, and in West Virginia and Alabama later in May. During all of these webinars, I mean, during all of these workshops, members of our power team will be available for you to chat with, for you to learn more about um, best practices, and different types of projects that are coming through the pipeline and how to think about the best way to recruit partners um, and develop good project proposals that you can submit as a pre-application um, for further review. These webinars are free and open to the public, and you can register, again, right there on arc.gov slash power. And if you have any questions, uh, we're wrapping up here in our formal part of our presentation, but if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down. Um, at uh, uh, on the Q&A box at the top, or you can also send them directly to us at power at arc.gov. So again, some of those basic resources here, you know, um, we've got the, the email that we just mentioned, this uh, one-stop shop here of all of our resources at arc.gov slash power. We also mentioned EDA, Economic Development Administration, who's our main funding partner um, for the Power Initiative. And that, uh, a lot of the projects that might be uh, appropriate for them and for those guys to review, you can learn all about that stuff um, on their website, too. So I know, Jeff, we've had some questions that have come in. The first question has come in, actually, uh, from a private business owner and asks, I'm a private business owner. Can I apply for power support? It's a great question. We hear that a lot out in the field. Private businesses are encouraged to be part of the community's power planning teams because they are key partners in economic development. While ARC cannot fund private for-profit businesses directly, communities can use ARC funds, including those administered through the power initiative, to develop strategies to strengthen the business environment. For instance, business support organizations can use power to establish business incubators and accelerators, engage with community colleges to develop workforce training programs, and provide rapid prototyping assistance to, or facilitate access to capital to firms that are part of existing industry clusters. 
That's really useful. Thanks. I know we've gotten that question a bunch of times. We also had a question of if this webinar would be available online, and this as well as all of our other uh, webinars will be available online. They're actually put up there as YouTube videos, so you don't need any special gizmos to view them, um, and they will be at arc.gov slash power. Uh, we got another question. Um, from a community or, you know, someone who's thinking about putting together a power application, and they're wondering if they could be part of more than one um, application. Yes, most definitely. In fact, the application portal was designed for applicants to be a part, to have multiple applications there. So when you log in, you'll get to a dashboard, and you'll see all the applications that you're a part of and their status. So they can be part of a whole bunch of different projects, but they can't re resubmit the same project multiple times, right? Well, we don't want them to submit the same application separately to each of the agencies. But if after the first review, if we find there's some information missing from the application, we'll send it back to them with some comments. And as long as funding is still available, they can then resubmit, and it can go through the review process again. Great. Okay, I think that's really helpful. Um, someone else asked about uh, when our um, next uh, webinar would be. And again, those webinars are um, here, just listed up here. We're going to be doing our next one on May 4th, which will be about the technical assistance side of the power, pro the power initiative. And this is support that's available to communities to help them um, figure out how to write the grant or, or make those appropriate partnerships or whatever they need to do to prepare. And the details about how to make those uh, applications for those funds will be reviewing on May 4th. Um, we also had uh, a, a question of if the pre-application, the questions from the pre-application is available. Yeah, the answer to that is yes. Um, again, all those materials that you would need to get everything in gear, it's like preparing for an exam in a way, but not that hard. Um, all those materials are available at arc.gov slash power, including a checklist for everything that you're going to need for submitting an application through um, the portal uh, and all the background materials that we talked about. Yes, I think that checklist is on the resources section on the arc.gov slash power website. Just look in the resources box, and you'll see the pre-application checklist, and that contains links to all the hard copies of all the forms you need, so you can see all the questions. And keep in mind that there are some specific instructions for ARC in the FFO in the back of that in Section H. Great. We had another question about the review, what the review process is. Will ARC folks be reviewing ARC projects, EDA folks reviewing EDA projects? How is that going to work? Yes, each agency is going to be reviewing the projects independently. Following, We'll follow our own process and procedures, and EDA is going to follow theirs. For ARC, that means we're going to have a team of internal people as well as state representatives looking at each project, and we'll do an evaluation to determine whether it meets the criteria set forth in the FFO, the items that we discussed earlier. Great. So it's a real team approach, at least here at, at ARC. Again, for folks who are looking at um, EDA's uh, support that's available through the Power Initiative, really, really encourage you to look at um, their website. They have some special things that we want to make sure that you guys are aware of um, over here at eda.gov slash power. Again, there is power support available for coal impacted communities outside of Appalachia. Um, and, you know, we, we know that that's an issue outside of this region. Right now, we're just sort of talking about folks here in the region, but EDA funds are available for both in and outside the region. Um, so there was a question here about applicants and co-applicants. We know that that can be really kind of confusing and technical. Um, Jeff, can you walk us through what the difference is between an applicant and a co-applicant or, or why folks need to pay attention to that? Well, the co-applicant process is something that EDA <laughs> uses. So for questions on that, I'd refer people to their state economic development representative or EDR. And there's a list of them on the EDA website. For ARC, we only use a single applicant or the primary applicant and other participating partners that may need to get some of the resources or some of the funds and are helping out with the implementation are treated as sub-grantees or sub-contracts to the main grant. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. 
All right. I think that's about all we have time for today. So we're going to wrap up today. Um, but again, everything that you might need uh, is on that website at arc.gov slash power. Um, all the recordings of our webinars, um, all the materials. You can also join us at one of those workshops that we mentioned, which is also available there. Um, so thank you again for joining us. It's, I hope this was informative to you. We'll see you back here in about two weeks' time. And uh, again, I hope, uh, hope this has been useful to you. Thank you.